So I'm taking a minute out from the Chiefs and the Dolphins game because, you know, I promise you that I'll give you the Tesla news on Saturday afternoon. So it's past afternoon, but this is the best I can do. All right. So according to Pablo 99489677714, that's how you'll find him on X. Tesla's ambitious leap into India, a $30 billion investment and a new EV plant on the horizon. In a significant boost to India's electric vehicle landscape, Tesla is gearing up for a grand entry. The company is in advance talks about investing nearly $30 billion over the next five years. This includes a $3 billion investment for a small car from an Indian plant aimed at the developing world. If the new EV policy meets Tesla's requirements, we could soon see Tesla's standard models competing in the India luxury model market as well. Additionally, additionally, Tesla plans to build and test a charging ecosystem vital for EV adoption. With potential locations like, all right, are you with these cities? Haryana, Tamil, Nadu, Maharashtra. Anyway, you know, Tesla's India venture could be game changing. Now, let's be clear. This looks speculative, even though it's coming from the news in India. It says, of course, that this is just in the planning stages, and uh, we've all thought that maybe in the first quarter we would get a final decision. Uh, but anyway, uh, I thought it was important that I at least bring you this news, even though it's still very speculative. I know I would never bring you speculative things, would I? Anyway, this is Randy Kirk. Please like, please subscribe, please, please hit notify. I will be continuing. So, so far, I've done two of a series of five of these uh, videos that I'm doing that are giving my 50, 50 predictions, speculations, prognostications about 2024 for Tesla. Two of those are already out today. I'll be doing either one or two of them again tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow night, I will bring you the news like this. Sometime I'll break away from the games again, although I guess there's no game in the afternoon tomorrow, so that'll make that easy. And then, uh, so you want to hit notify, so you're reminded about all that. I really want to hear from you with regard to this 50 different uh, predictions, looking for your comments with regard to those predictions, because I spent a lot of time and energy and thought in those predictions, and I want to see what you think about them. All right. And then, of course, you want to buy one of these. All right. Uh, yes, it's true. We're still selling cyber trucks. We should be selling more and more of them because more and more people actually have them now. So <laughs> give them to your friends. I think it's a perfect thing to tell your wife or your loved one that you would like to have for Valentine's Day. All right, let's go on ahead. We have um, Baird over at Tip Rank saying, load up. That's what he said, load up. With He's talking about Tesla stock. Load up. That's what he says. Not invest, I'm not giving you investment advice, but sounds right to me. Okay, Larry Goldberg today laid to rest the general understanding by almost everyone in the entire community, including me, that the that Tom Zhu had said that the Mexico plant would have five thousand uh, bots and five thousand you know Optimus bots and five thousand employees, about 50-50 split. Well, it uh, turns out Larry went back. He listened to the to the thing over and over again. He looked at the transcript and he says, no, that is not what Tom Zhu was saying. Tom Zhu was saying that, that, that this is kind of a projection. This is kind of a way to look at things in terms of the future with regard to the um, Optimus robot. All right. Brian Wong has a major new item on his website, nextbigfuture.com. If you don't know it, he and I are also now working together on videos that we're putting up on Next Big Future uh, on his YouTube channel, where we're talking about science, the big science uh, things of the week. But in this particular case, it was relevant also to Tesla. He put up uh, a story on the website, this is not a video yet, where um, NVIDIA has announced quite a list of companies well, you know, that, are, that are partnering um, that are doing robots, that are doing various kinds of robots, but also humanoid robots. So, you know, uh, all of the regular suspects. And then Brighter with Herbert also did an extensive video with Scott Walter on exactly the same subject. So this is a very big subject now because with all of these other companies coming forward, most of them do not have manufacturing facilities. Most of them do not have AI capabilities. Most of them don't certainly don't have the abilities to do their own chips, things of that nature. So they're going to have to partner with other people. 
And, uh, you know, that is the story. And so here's what I'm thinking about all this. And you know how much I like Elon's leadership, but I don't think NVIDIA waited for these folks to call them. I stated in my book, The Elon Musk Mission, and multiple times on this channel, that I really think Tesla is short on proactive sales efforts. It starts with the cars themselves. There are plenty of ways to use a sales team to get out and sell governments and corporate fleets and police departments and help rental car companies to roll out programs without ending up with this Hertz mess that we just went through. Because Hertz, I'm sure, called them. When they said they wanted to buy 100,000 vehicles, Elon even went out of his way to say, well, just you know, go up online and start buying them. They don't have a sales organization. So if I'd heard, for instance, if I was a salesman working for Tesla and I'd heard from my customer, Hertz, that they were having trouble with their customers not knowing how to operate the vehicles because they're like a computer on wheels or that they didn't understand even how to charge the vehicle, which obviously if you've never done it before, you don't know to look for that little button on the handle. Okay, so um, now all of a sudden people are unhappy, they bring them back, they, you know. I would have immediately offered methods to overcome these issues. It might have been some kind of a laminated card in the car, or as I mentioned the other day for the first time before anybody else had this idea, why not have the thing on the entertainment channel? As soon as you get in the car, if the car has never seen that particular uh, phone before, the, the, the uh, Grok, <laughs> Croc could say, oh, I don't recognize you. Are you familiar with the operating system for this car? Do you understand how things work? And if the person says yes, then fine. Oh, okay, well, fine. Well, if you'd like to listen to this 10-minute video, you could. You know, Or if they say no, hey, we highly recommend that you listen to this brief video. You, you get the point, all right? So I think that would have been a great solution. Or Let's say that uh, the client is getting killed on the resales due to the problematic uh, chain boom bust economy that we went through. I would have suggested all kinds of ways to move the Tesla vehicles, either through Tesla's system or be giving them some kind of compensation in the future on future purchases in order to keep the problem out of the headlines. There's really no excuse for those issues having ever made the headlines and hurting Tesla stock last week. If you have a great sales organization out there working with your customers, these things don't happen. But I, I don't know for a fact that they don't, but I do suspect that Elon's disdain for advertising and for PR departments extends also to salespeople. All three have their place. I've used them for my companies my entire career. I've always had PR. I've always had advertising. I've always had salespeople. The first, almost always my first hire, maybe my second hire. I think my first hire was always kind of a, a uh, an administrative assistant, they now call it. So my second hire was almost always a salesperson. So um, I, all I got to say is, Elon, they have a place all three, and they need to be managed, they can be managed according to your expectations, your intentions, your mission. They don't have to be the kind of people that you're maybe thinking in your head that are, you know, uh, I know you've said about PR that it's uh, it's propaganda. You've said about advertising that, you know, companies that have good products don't need it. I mean, no, Elon, no, I'm sorry. It's just wrong. <laughs> so get some salespeople and get, get proactive. All right, call me. I'll help you out on that. I've done it a couple of times. All right. I, <laughs> so then we've got the companies that were actually in, you know, getting together with NVIDIA. So we have Boston Dynamics and Figure and some of these other companies that you've heard about recently and they're partnering. Well, I'm going to tell you that Tesla can make useful robots for well under $20,000 each and probably more for, more like $5,000 each. And then they can rent them out for a minimum of $50,000, $60,000, $70,000 a year. And the, the TAM is unlimited. They don't need NVIDIA to help them. But it, 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 but these other companies do. They're going to need manufacturers. They're going to need NVIDIA. They're going to need people to help them with every other aspect that they don't do internally. But... Tesla, in my personal opinion, is ready to go to market. I, as you know, I think they've got a skunk works right now where these bots are already doing useful tasks, even useful tasks that they can do on the lines in, in uh, the Tesla MotorWorks all around the world. 
I think there are e extremely easy jobs, but even some more complex jobs that they're already doing and that they can go out and do. Some people are, are so confused about the TAM. They're like, oh, well, you know, it's going to take a long time before these these bots can do things that are um, useful. But what, let me tell you, I am an, ex am an expert, okay? I'm an expert in screen printing, pad printing, and other printing processes in the advertising specialty space. And I can assure you that almost nothing in this industry is automated. These are small companies. Some of the biggest ones are like 50, 60 employees. Most of them are two, three, four, five employees, 10 employees. And they do everything by hand. And it's no skill involved to pick up a t-shirt and put it onto a platen. And then when the after the t-shirt is printed to pick it up take it off and put it onto a dryer and then for somebody to take it off the dryer and go fold it and put it in a bag these are things a robot can do in my company it was no big deal to uh to have, to have a, that robot sit in front of an injection motor or a blow motor or an extruder and take product off the end of the line and and put it into packaging and then put the packaging into boxes. I mean, these are easy jobs. These are not things that's going to be complicated based on everything we've already seen bots doing by other companies other than Tesla. So there's the TAM. What's the TAM? So for instance, there are 100,000 screen printers and pad printers in the United States. And those are just the people that are the tech, the, the ones who are actually running the pad printers and running the, the uh, screen printers. Then you have the people that are on the, upside of that of that supply line of that uh, pr production line and then you have the downstream people upstream and downstream probably two to one so you're going to have two hundred thousand people that are working in that same company that are upstream or downstream from the person doing the actual work now when you get an injection molding and blow molding and uh, extrusion you've got another hundred thousand at least people doing those kind of jobs and now you've also got upstream and downstream people supporting them so that's just two categories of business that I'm familiar with. And I am positive that Tesla's, that the Optimus could already do it. In fact, I'm positive that, that uh, a figure, the figure, pro, I forget what they call their robot. I'm positive that robot can almost certainly go out and do it right now. So it's a big, big business. It is not going to be about competition. Tesla's not going to care about the competition for 10 years. I'm telling you. What about flipping hamburgers? I mean, it goes on and on and on. There's millions and millions of jobs. I, that, those were just the numbers for the United States. Can you imagine how many more people are doing screen printing of T-shirts and water bottles and, and pens and all the rest of that kind of stuff in Mexico, even Canada, you know, and, and around the world? Anyway, lots and lots of easily done tasks, boring, repetitive, you know the story. All right. So that is my feeling about the bots. I'm not sure. Keep keep sending me your 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 uh, problems with what I'm saying. People are saying all kinds of things in the, in the comments that I don't really understand. These are easy tasks. <laughs> They're easy tasks. <laughs> and it won't be hard to bring these people in. And I'm telling you, personally, I would have happily paid fifty thousand. I mean, sorry, five thousand dollars a month for at least ten bots for my factory. I had about seventy. I had a hundred employees, but I think about seventy-five of those were working in the back, doing things having to do with blow molding, injection, extrusion, printing, capping, putting in boxes, moving boxes around, warehouse work, all that kind of stuff. I'm telling you, at least ten of those people could have been replaced like that, no problems at all. All right, let's see here. We've got from Ben Alsop. Um, he says, that's also X. The only thing keeping me from upgrading my Model 3 right now to the new Model 3 Plus is FSD transferability. Without that, the math doesn't just add up. I suspect this will be the case for lots and lots of people. Well, all of a sudden that and that plus my response is getting a lot of activity right now on X. I said back to him, look, Tesla never expected this to be such a long-term issue. I think they should allow transfers now, especially if the issue is trading up to a new vehicle. So I think that, that they should change the policy, maybe for a year, maybe for two years. I don't know. Maybe only in certain circumstances or certain situations. Maybe somebody suggested, well, at least once you should be able to transfer it at least once. Lots of ideas, but you know, I think this is a bad policy as it stands right now. All right, then we have from Hudster2, also on X, breaking. 
Tesla Roadster. Uh, he says, I just left the Tesla service center to senior techs from their shop were shipped back to headquarters last week to begin their training for the new Roadster. Okay, he, said, he says, release is imminent. Roadster coming at the beginning of quarter two. <laughs> okay, uh, and then he's, his last thing, he says, let's go. Well, I want to just tell you that this I would take with a grain or two of salt because service center people saying that out loud, um, potentially losing their job. I, I, I'm wondering if the, this guy has it right or if there's more to this story and we'll find out. But interesting, interesting. Well, here's my last thing for today. Did you know that Tesla is the 10th largest automaker by revenue and is likely to be the number seven by the end of 2024? And it's only a matter of time before they pass Toyota and uh, and Volkswagen and the rest. In fact, it's not even a matter of that much time before they pass them by revenue and even by unit uh, sales as well. All right, so if uh, you haven't done it yet, please hit like, please hit subscribe, please, please hit notify, please uh, you know get your Cybertruck, join Patreon, and go back. I'm going to put the cards up for the first two, okay? Each one of them has 10. There's going to be a total of five of these videos giving 50 different items that I believe are going to happen in 2024 that will all be having major impact on the future of Tesla and the stock and therefore of your and my wealth in the future. So go back and take a look at those. Uh, I'll put the card for number one and number two right here so you can go back and check them out. That's all I got. Let's go back to football. It's Randy Kirk. Been great talking to you.